Hi there, my name is John, and uh, I'm the creator of the Web LGSM project. Uh, I wanted to give a little overview of the project here and show a basic install and setup for it, uh, and then just talk about the project a little bit and show some details about it. So, uh, what is the Web LGSM? Well, as the description up here says, the Web LGSM is just a simple web interface for managing your LGSM servers, uh, written in Python 3 using Flask. So basically what this is, uh, if you're not already familiar, um, this is a web interface wrapping the Linux Game Server Manager project. So uh, I'm a big fan of the Linux Game Server Manager project. Uh, I'm not affiliated with these guys at all. But uh, basically what these guys are is they write a set of bash scripts for a bunch of different game servers that can be administered on Linux. And so uh, basically, as you can see, they've got a number of servers listed here. And any of these, if you would like to set up one of these servers and run it and then stop, start, update, you know, uh, all sorts of monitor it and all, all sorts of stuff like this, you can do that via a set, a set of bash scripts that uh, the Linux LGSM project produces. Now, the thing about this, these are great scripts. I, I love using the LGSM. Uh, just one of the problems with it is that it's uh, command line only. So if you... Uh, have some friends who maybe want to start the game server or something like that, and uh, they don't know any shell commands. They don't know how to SSH into the server or anything like that. The LGSM uh, isn't any use to them until now. Now I've created this web LGSM project, and basically what this is is just a Python 3 Flask app that goes ahead and wraps up uh, the LGSM commands and allows you to you know stop, start, update, restart, monitor... Um, and a bunch of, um, so much more. Um, you can view the live console and stuff here. I've got a couple GIFs showing uh, everything that the web LGSM can do. We can install servers through it. I'll go ahead and show you all this hands-on. So let's go ahead and jump into it. <laughs> so to start with, uh, we're just going to want to clone the repository. So we can just copy that git clone command and go ahead and run it here on our server. Um, so I've got a little uh, dummy... Uh, cloud server setup. It's just a VM I'm running here, um, but it's supposed to, you know, pretend as if it's your VM that you're running, uh, you know, your game servers on. If you already have uh, a game server set up on some cloud server somewhere or something like that, uh, imagine that's this machine here. So we, we went ahead and cloned the repo. Now we can go down into the web LGSM directory. And from here, all that you need to do is uh, go ahead and run the install script. And that'll go ahead and uh, prompt for a sudo password if you haven't already got a TTY ticket. I've recently run sudo in this terminal, so I already had a sudo ticket. Um, but that'll go ahead and download all of the apt requirements for this uh, project. Uh, that's why it asked for the sudo password there, is there's a couple of apt requirements. And then it'll also install all of the Python requirements in a env, in a local uh, Python environment. <laughs> so... That'll just take a second to finish up here. Uh, it's important to note, <clears throat> you can run this on any flavor of Linux. There should be no problem. I've, I've never even te I've never tested this, but it wouldn't surprise me if it would also run within the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, the thing is, this install script is tailored specifically to Ubuntu and Debian. Uh, so really, as long as you can find the packages and install them for your distribution of Linux, this should run anywhere. It's just a Python Flask application, really. So, but that install script is for uh, Ubuntu specifically, yeah. So once uh, once it's installed, we can just run the init script to go ahead and start the web LGSM server. So by default, that will start it on uh, 127, you know, localhost 12357. So in this case, I actually don't want to do that. So I'll go ahead and run stop here to stop it. And then I'm going to edit the init script. And instead, I'm going to change this IP to all interfaces to 0000. zero, zero, zero. And that'll go ahead and run the app on uh, any available IPs we have here. So we'll go ahead and run that there. And now I can go ahead and in a browser, uh, go and access the app. So if we now go to this, of course it says site can't be reached. Why would it be easy? Oh, uh, firewall. I think that's what's going on. Uh, yeah, can't access this because of a firewall. I'm pretty sure 
unless that's not trying to go to HTTPS, right? HTTP. So I just have this on a little server on my network. Uh, yeah, okay, so I think what's going on here is we need to enable firewall. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, <clears throat> in this case, I'm using UFW, so go UFW enable. I'll say yes. And then after that, we'll say sudo UFW allow. And then it's gonna say it. it we want TCP for SSH to the server, obviously. And then we also want, uh, in reality, you're probably going to want to have 80 and 443 open for like a real web server for uh, Apache or Nginx or something. Uh, and then you're going to want to reverse proxy the app uh, because you don't want to run the Gunicorn server like on the edge. Uh, you you, you want to have something proxied and you want to have SSL so that it's secure. But in this case, we're going to do 12357. TCP, allow that in. And then I also put in the wrong port over here. That'll do it. One, two, three, five, seven. Ta-da! And we can access our web interface. Cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we'll make a little test user uh, account. And uh, I'm going to just grab a password here. Paste that in there. Paste that in there. Go ahead and click Submit. And now we're in. Now we're logged in and we have our uh, web LGSM instance created and it's up and running. All we have to do now is uh, we'll go ahead and install a game server. So as you can see, number of game servers here available to install. Uh, I update this list regularly. I have a script that I use to just update this list based on the, the latest stuff that the LGSM puts out. Um, if there's something on here that's not up to date, just let me know and I'll find it and try to update it. Um, okay, but yeah, let's go through, let's do a Minecraft install because it installs pretty quickly as a demo here. So if you don't want to enter your real pseudo password here um, and you're worried about that being unencrypted, if you don't have an SSL certificate set up or something, one thing you can do is if you have pseudo TTY tickets set up, so in other words, if you run sudo dash L and you see here pseudo TTY tickets set up on the remote machine, uh, what you can do is, as long as you have a, a relevant TTY ticket here, you can just enter anything in this field and uh, go ahead and hit submit. And then you can install without actually entering the real root password there because you'll you'll already have a, a root TTY session. So uh, the, the root session is needed because uh, there's a pseudo password which is required to install these apt requirements here. Um, so you see missing missing requirements and it'll go ahead and app, uh, uh, install anything that it needs for the particular game server. So for Minecraft here, it probably needs some Java stuff and stuff like that. So that'll go ahead and run here and we'll just let that do its business. Yeah, I think, um, uh, pretty sure it auto accepts the EULA, EULA there. And then, yep, you'll see the percentage grow. And then there you go. You'll see uh, default server config copy to common.cfg and that server is uh, installed. Then if we go back to the home page, we'll see Minecraft is installed here. If we click on Minecraft, uh, we can see all the different controls for the Minecraft game server. Um, there's a number of different controls here. Uh, let's go ahead and, well, first we'll go ahead and we'll click some details just to get information about the server. And as you can see, that'll fetch any of the required LGSM scripts here and it'll print out all the details information for our uh, particular Minecraft server instance. So let's go ahead and start it. We'll go ahead and give it a start. That'll once again fetch any of the required GitHub commands and start the server. Uh, now, if we go back to the home page, we should see the little green icon is lit up for our server uh, and it's running there. Now, Minecraft sucks and is Java and it's super resource intensive, so that's going to slow down my VM. And so I'm just going to do kill all dash nine Java. That should, that should do it. 
that will stop it there. And then if we get back to the home page, it's off. We can see there. So yeah, there's a number of different game server commands that we have here. You can update the game server. You can monitor the game server and see if it's currently running. This will go ahead and check if it's on or not. Uh, if you're not sure, of course, I have the indicator on the uh, main page as well. Uh, yeah, and so right, right, right. That is this basic screen. There's also a basic settings page. Uh, the settings page here has some cool stuff. So just like uh, on the Minecraft page, you can see this text color here. This text color is adjustable from the settings page. We can go in here and you can change this to uh, blue or something. Click apply and uh, that'll save your settings and then go back to your Minecraft page and you'll see now the text is in this blue color instead. Uh, it doesn't change any of this text color because that's hard coded, but you know, always hacking away on this thing. So uh, other than settings, there is the remove game server or leave game server files. Uh, in general, I'd say leave game server files and then you manually go clean them up with the setting controls is if you click remove game server files on delete, then when you go to delete a game server, it, if you toggle delete here and then click delete selected and click OK, but I'm not going to do that. But if you do that, then and you have this set to remove files, then it'll clean up any Minecraft game server files on deletion. Now, you got to be careful with that. If you have things nested, you don't want to you know, be wiping out too much stuff because that will just wipe out the whole Minecraft directory. So in general, I'd say leave game server files and then clean up on your own. But if you know what you're doing, use the remove. The text area height is, once again, for uh, the, this height here. If you would like this to be, I don't know, 90 columns for something, or, uh, you know, you can go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, so what else in settings? Other things in settings. Uh, this, they, the LGSM keep, people keep changing the way they do the Tmux uh, sessions and the way that you read information from the Tmux sockets. So what this will do is just clean up any socket files. Basically, the reason that this checkbox exists is um, because I found myself cleaning it up a bunch normally, so I just went ahead and made a button for it instead of running the RM command a bunch. I just made a button to do it in the web interface, basically. But uh, you shouldn't really need to do that unless something gets wonky, where like you start a game server and you know it's running, but this button's still red. There might be old dead Tmux uh, sessions that are just hanging around that need to be cleaned up. So if you turn off the game server and then you purge the socket files, that'll that'll clean things up. But okay, yeah. So uh, the last thing is just an update check, just to check if any updates are available, and it will automatically pull them in and download them. We know in this case there shouldn't be anything because we uh, we just installed this, obviously. But yeah, you can run that there, and then uh, yeah. So that's basically uh, that's basically everything. Let's go ahead, and I'll show you the last thing I want to show is the add existing installation page. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove our Minecraft installation. Uh, and remember, we have the leave files around. It's not going to delete them. So we'll go ahead and say okay, and that'll that'll Minecraft is deleted. And now let's say we want to add it back. So this add existing LGSM installation page is for if you have a game server uh, install already created, an LGSM install already created, and you want to just add it to this web interface, you can use this section here. So add existing LGSM install, you just have to go ahead and enter your, uh, my, your whatever title you want to call this, you could name this whatever. Um, and then you want to enter the path to it. Uh, so in this case, actually, that's not correct. In this case, it's web GSM, and then and then the Minecraft executable executable is MC server. So go ahead and click submit on that. It'll add game server added, and we'll have our Minecraft install once again available here to you know do whatever we want with. If we can, yeah. Stop, start it, restart it. Oh yeah, the last thing to show you on this controls page is uh, if you start the server, and it'll go ahead and say starting, starting Minecraft server, and then we come down here and we hit the console button, we actually get a nice little live console output of what's going on in the server console. So if we just want to see, you know, it's going to be preparing spawn area, 
anybody who started a Minecraft server before will know that this takes a long time for it to just go ahead and prepare the spawn area. But uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and once again stop that because uh, Java is intense. We don't like Java. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the whole thing. One little other tweak to show you, a little more details for those who are sticking around. Uh, the main.conf here, once again within the web LGSM directory, there's a file called main.conf. And this controls that text color, text area height that you saw in the settings page there. You know, once again, if we go back to the settings page, that's where this information gets saved. So if we change that here, let's go ahead and change that to red or uh, uh, yeah, yellow. That's a great, great color. Uh, and then we go ahead and cat that file again. We'll see that's changed here. Um, so yeah, that's where that information is stored. There is one hidden setting in here, which is config editor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And this is just standard INI format here. So if we change that config editor to on, and then we go to our game server, you'll notice here a new section. Now there is an edit config section. So we'll see two here. We'll see the server properties. This is the Minecraft server configuration file itself. If we click on that, you'll see there is, we have now the ability to go ahead and edit different server configuration parameters here. And we can download the config file if we want to have a copy of it and stuff like that. Uh, yes, so yeah, but basically there's a little note down here. This is just a note for uh, the way that the LGSM does uh, con configuration files. So yeah, there's a common.cfg. We can come in here and, and you know, anybody who's set up a job, uh, a Minecraft server before will probably recognize some of, some of this stuff here. Um, but yeah, okay. So basically the reason that I have this config file editor disabled by default uh, is because that does present a slight security risk, which is if someone were to get access to your web LGSM backend, and they could come in here and they could edit your configuration files, uh, they could uh, do a lot of damage. They could potentially gain uh, remote code execution on your server, and that's that's not a good thing. You don't want people hacking your server through your game server manager interface. So I would really only recommend turning that config editor on uh, if you like have SSL and you have a strong password and you trust the, the people that you're giving the password to and stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's basically... The web LGSM in a nutshell here. Uh, thank you for sticking around to the end. Um, yeah, uh, not much else to say here. Right, I guess this is sort of part one. I might make a part two or I might just link to some more information here because uh, basically the thing about this is this is a standalone web application. So what ideally you would want to do here is proxy this to through a real web server. So you see here this whole time I've been using this in non-secure and you don't want to be passing credentials through plain text, you know, uh, just through, through anybody could be sniffing and might, you know, get your credentials. So you, you don't want to pass uh, any sort of root credentials in plain text. So you want to have a certificate and how do you get a certificate? Well, uh, I would recommend looking into something like uh, Nginx proxy manager. Um, yeah. Let's hear. This thing here is a standalone Docker container that'll just take care of setting up the Nginx reverse proxy for you. And we'll go ahead and so, you know, this is running on localhost, uh, you know, 12357 here. Well, if you want this to be on a real domain name with a real SSL certificate and stuff, what you'd probably want to do is use something like this or use a standalone. Nginx or Apache server and get like a real Let's Encrypt SSL or other real SSL certificate uh, to encrypt your traffic. Uh, but yeah, on local host or in your local LAN, uh, you know, it's probably okay to use in an insecure uh, form. Yeah, so okay, that's basically it. Um, I'll try to link to some documentation and some guides on uh, setting up Nginx Proxy Manager to make sure that you set up the LGSM in the most secure way as possible. But thanks for sticking it out to the end. Uh, make sure to go ahead and give me a star here on uh, 
on GitHub if you like the project. Uh, yeah, thanks. Okay, cool.